Hey, guess what? I made another weird thing in Geometry Dash, and now I'm going to explain how I made it. Yay! However, this time, the visuals of the level are not going to be the main focus, as I think there are some other things in this level that would be much more interesting to take a look at. You see, I made a programming language in Geometry Dash. Now, this might seem extremely pointless. And you're right. Okay, so you know what a program is, right? It's a thing that runs on your computer. Simple. So, a programming language is basically what these programs are made of. Spoken languages create speech. Programming languages create programs. There are thousands of programming languages out there, and one of these languages is called... Uh, wait, let me check my YouTube analytics real quick. Yeah, I should be fine. Also, ooh, look at this statistic. Anyways, one of these languages is called BrainFuck. While most other programming languages try to be as useful as possible for, you know, programming, this one is a little different. In fact, the goal of BrainFuck is not to be useful, but rather to be as mind-numbingly frustrating to use as possible. The language is as simple as they come, having just enough commands to be theoretically able to do most things, while in practice, the simplest tasks become extremely hard to do. But BrainFuck also has an upside. Because of its simplicity, it is actually very easy to make BrainFuck in other programming languages. Wait, hold up. How does that work? How can there be a programming language inside another programming language? Well, you see my friend, even though programs are made with many different programming languages, computers can actually only understand one language, and it looks something like this. Can you understand this? No, of course you can't, because unlike human languages, which are designed for human brains, like you hopefully, this is a computer language, designed for wires and transistors. You can make it look a little better like this, but you would still have to be a gigantic nerd to be able to understand this. However, just like with human languages, when there's a language we don't understand, we can use a translator. In this case, we can translate something that is much nicer for squishy human brains to handle, into this mess. Since BrainFuck is so simple, such a translator is very easy to make. In fact, you do not even have to be familiar with this to make one. Instead of a translator, you can make something kind of like a servant, which just does the things the BrainFuck code says it will do without translating first. Of course, this servant program needs to be made of that mess from earlier, but we can use a translator someone else made to make our servant using some easier language. Here's one in Rust, which is the best programming language by the way. This is not a matter of subjectivity. I am a representative of the Rustitians. Join us in the enlightenment. All hail Lord Ferris. Anyways, another programming language that exists is Geometry Dash Triggers. No, I'm serious. Triggers can take information in through for example touch triggers and give information out through for example move triggers and color changers. If levels can run on your computer, and programs are things that run on your computer, and programming languages create programs, then GD triggers are definitely a programming language. Now, not to brag or anything, but I know how to use geometry dash triggers. Look, I can make a block move, I can make it change color, I can even make it move only when I touch the screen. No big deal. However, the more complicated your project gets, the more of a pain triggers are to use. This is mainly because Geometry Dash triggers, as a programming language, barely use any abstraction. What that means is that when using GD triggers, you cannot take something complicated, call it by a name, and then use that name to refer to the complicated thing in the future. No, you have to remember the entire complicated thing every time you want to use it. This goes for everything from having to remember a group ID each time you want to send a signal from one trigger to another, to having to remake an entire system of triggers for every possible winning move of tic-tac-toe. As it happens, that mess from earlier has pretty much the exact same problem. It does not have much abstraction, and so making a larger project gets very tedious. The solution in that case was to design another language that had a lot of abstraction, and then make a translator to translate it into the horrible computer puke. So maybe we could use the same method for geometry dash triggers. Maybe we could make a simpler programming language and have a translator convert it into triggers for us. The answer is yes, we could, but it would be an absolutely horrible idea. First off, since triggers are so fundamentally different from the code we usually translate to, 
we would have to invent an entirely new and different simple language to translate from. Plus, you would have to invent whole new methods of converting and optimizing the code. Plus, since GD triggers are so buggy, you would probably be spending more time trying to work around Robtop's bugs than fixing your own. It would be at least a multi-year project making something remotely usable, let alone efficient. And after all that effort, it will probably only be useful to a grand total of about 3 people in the world who makes these kinds of geometry dash levels. Just a horrible idea in general. Nobody would ever be stupid enough to do that. Oh. Oh, oh wait. Yeah, yeah, I totally did that. Introducing Spawn. A programming language that translates, or compiles, to geometry dash triggers. Here's how it works. Let's say we've made this little guy, and we want him to move around. Normally, we would have to place a bunch of move triggers moving the group ID is in, but let's use Spawn instead. First, we can give the guy a sensible name, so we don't have to remember the group ID all the time. Then, we can move him around a bit using this move command. If I translate this into triggers, these are the triggers that come out. See how it's way easier to see what this does than what this does. What if we wanted to move when we press a button? We can do that. What if we wanted to move with a master game style UI while colliding with walls and collecting coins that can be used to buy lemonade? 60 lines of spawn code. So, how does the translator translate this into this? Well, as I said earlier, geometry dash triggers do not implement much abstraction, but there is actually a little bit. If you have a bunch of triggers you want to use multiple times in your system, you can use a spawn trigger to activate those triggers from anywhere in your project. Granted, it will be the same groups doing the same things every time, but it's still an improvement over no abstraction at all. In programming terms, it's kind of like a function that can take no arguments, can't return anything, and it's also asynchronous, meaning the code doesn't wait for the function to finish. This mechanism of using the spawn trigger as a sort of function call is what this programming language kind of hinges on, hence the name. In spawn, and now I'm talking about the programming language, not the trigger, we call a bunch of triggers that can be triggered by a spawn trigger a trigger function, and it looks like this. This exclamation mark is what kind of characterizes it, so when you see one, you know you're dealing with the trigger function. Whenever there is some group ID being triggered, or spawned, there is pretty much always some trigger function involved. But wait, in our example from earlier, with the guy moving around, there are definitely spawn triggers involved. Where's the exclamation mark? Well, to find it, we need to look inside this move command. This is actually a macro, which basically means that what we write here is replaced with something else, and often something more complicated. If we look where this function is defined, we can see what this command gets replaced with. This first part essentially makes the move trigger object and adds it to the level. And the second part tells it to wait out the duration of the move trigger before continuing the program. As you might notice, the second part is also a macro. And if we look at what's inside it, we finally find our trigger function. The object created here is actually a spawn trigger with some specified delay that then after that delay triggers this trigger function. The return inside it means that this macro will return when this trigger function is triggered. Therefore, it will return after the specified delay. You can think of the return as being replaced with everything that comes after the macro call. So everything after this essentially happens inside this trigger function. Now, you might think this is a bit complicated for a single move trigger. But remember, you don't have to think about all this when programming in spawn. You only need to think about it as a command that moves something. If you were building with triggers in the editor, you would have to think about this all the time. But when using spawn, you don't have to think about it at all. This is why abstraction is extremely useful. If you need to do something very specific and complicated, you have full control down to the individual object properties, but you only have to do the complicated thinking one time. After you have done the complicated thing once, you can put it all behind a name and never have to think about it again. This concept is the sole reason why you can program complicated things at all, and essentially why you can do math as well. In fact, you could argue that the foundation of human knowledge of the universe is built upon abstractions of more complicated things, and our job is to find out what those abstractions actually represent. Maybe, if we look deep enough, we can finally find the trigger function in the source code 
that causes mass to attract, that causes minds to be conscious, or that causes us to exist at all. But even if we don't, we can still use our abstractions to progress. Abstractions are what allows us to explore a universe we don't fully understand, without ever needing to fully understand it. And maybe it is best left not fully understood, as the mystery might just be what is keeping us going. In a very real way, abstractions could be the driving force behind all human progression, from now and into the distant future. <clears throat> uh, anyways, what were we talking about? Making weird stuff in the $3 mobile game? Right, so imagine you've spent like a thousand hours making this extremely pointless programming language, and now you want to make something in it. What do you make? Another even more pointless programming language inside your pointless programming language, of course. So by the time I'd finished a somewhat working version of Spawn, I had some friends test it for me, and one of them decided to make the brainfuck programming language in my language. It kinda worked, and I thought it was very interesting, so I blatantly copied their idea and made one too. I called it brainfudged because, you know. Here's how it works. The heart of brainfudged is the reader which is a little collision block that collides with the commands, which are also collision blocks. When the reader collides with the command, it will do that command and then move to the next command. Each command has a collision block ID, which I put into spawn like this. Each time the reader collides with the command, it calls this macro, which basically asks what command is colliding with, and then does the appropriate thing. This is only like 10% of the spawn code used to make this level though. As it turns out, Making the menu, tutorial, challenge system, and randomized background animations takes much more code than creating a full programming language. There's also a lot of code that is just there because the level, for some reason, doesn't work without that code. There's a good chance that this is my fault, that I have some bug in the translator. But there's also a very good chance that this is an issue with the game itself. One of Spawn's main goals is to limit how much the creator has to think about these bugs, but it is still not perfect. And that is where you come in. As I said earlier, I have a little testing server which you can join and help us test and develop the second most useless programming language in the world. There are already a lot of small projects other people in the server have made that you can test out. For example, this program that calculates pi in Geometry Dash. This program that can convert from binary to decimal and back to binary. And a bunch of other stuff. There's also this amazingly useful library by Lori. And if you join, it would be much appreciated if you could help us figure out what the hell it actually does. Anyways, see you in like 8 months, when I eventually make another weird thing.